Um, uh, largely, a lot of her messages are, are very, very complementary to the messages okay. I've got. I'm taking it a, a more holistic perspective across, um, yeah. uh, you know, themes that we're seeing across consistent organisations. But what they've done at Amadeus is absolutely what successful teams are doing. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, so definitely. Yeah. And are you at Deloitte? What's your role? Yeah, I'm from Deloitte, um, Deloitte Platform Engineering. I am. Um, I do APIs work, I do support work, dev work, test work, basically everything. Awesome. <laughs> Depending yeah. on what the client expects us to do. So, we're so do you work um, closely with Saul? Sorry? Do you work closely with Saul? Yeah, I. he's the principal and the, not like in the same team, but we have like a lot of clients which are common. So mm -hmm. we kind of like have to deal sometimes. No, everything is but yeah, we do have interaction sometimes based on the client's demands and ex expectation. Have you um, moderated uh, something like this before? Yeah, I've done, but never like virtually. It's like my first oh, time. I've got a really bad re reflection on my laptop. Okay. Yeah. It's like you have to look into the camera and I have this habit of looking everywhere because <laughs> it's just like uh, easier for me. I'm just, uh, I've just realized that the... Two like really yeah, bad. That's why I'm not wearing mine. Yeah, well, the problem is I can't see without them. So <laughs> okay, then maybe you should wear it. So how long have we got? Just have one minute and we'll be Hello everyone, welcome back. Now I have with me Claire, Claire Barrett. She is from Strategy Translator and Women in API Leads, and she will be talking about building the right API team for right now. And also thank you, Claire, for joining us today from UK where it's early morning right now. And now I'll stop blabbering, I'll let you do your thing now. I'm gonna leave and see you in a while. Great, thank you, Teji, and uh, uh, welcome everybody. And uh, uh, thank you for joining us from Australia. And uh, really feeling for everyone in Victoria and particularly in Melbourne right now. Um, uh, tough times. So. I only speak this morning about building the right API team for now, for this point in time. My name is Claire Barrett. I've been working for over 25 years making IT strategy happen, um, IT enabled strategy happen. And uh, I'm working at APIs First Consulting and we're uh, assisting organizations with accelerating their change and transformation agenda. I've been supporting this through recent research into what makes successful change stick, uh, not just uh, be transitory, and the people that I've been working with represent business and tech leaders from across the organization. I've also had the privilege recently to uh, take up leadership, co-leadership with the of the Women in APIs program sponsored by API Days and uh, delighted to um, uh, use as an opportunity uh, and a platform to make uh, speaking at tech and getting involved in tech conferences and knowledge more inclusive. Like many people, I've been uh, indulging in a bit of Netflix recently, and uh, it's been a good chance to uh, re, um, re see some old movies. Uh, I recently uh, enjoyed going back to that Brat Pack classic from the 1980s, The Breakfast Club. Uh, uh, and the story made me think about teams as being uh, accidental or uh, perhaps more intentional in terms of outcome. 
there's a group of five uh, misfits who are thrown together for a day in confinement. They have very strong views and prejudices about each other at the start of the day. Um, and as the story goes through, they uh, share a lot of their own personal vulnerabilities, their humanity, if you like, and uh, some shared experiences that mean by the end of the movie, they have this, you know, these quite, these romances have blossomed some, um, and a strong bond as a group. The, the question that the audience is left hanging with at the end is whether or not that uh, bond and friendship will be sustainable. So um, they, uh, um, so what they do is uh, leave one with this question about uh, uh, you know, whether or not they will then end up being um, uh, getting together. So one of the things that plays out for uh, an, uh, an accidental team in an API scenario is that um, organizations that bring together a group of people, perhaps in somewhat of an ad hoc way, uh, that um, over time um, start you know, volunteering or vo volunteering people to uh, get involved and support and help, means that the API intentions and the infrastructure and processes and so on behind it uh, fade over time. Um, uh, the, the tooling, the portals, the capabilities that people um, have to support them uh, dissipates. Um, people get challenged. Um, it's, uh, it becomes a place that people don't want to want to come to, and uh, API start proliferating. However, an intentional API team, one that uh, uh, creates a bow wave for broader, wider transformational change in an organisation, is one where it can actually drive out much wider impact. It creates ripples through the broader organization. And Maria's uh, talk just now, for those of you that had the um, opportunity to hear that, was a great example of uh, how the types of um, communication internally and externally uh, um, uh, uh, get expanded. And while they're, they're tough to do, they actually create a lot of impetus in the organization for broader change. Um, Organizations are like organisms. They they basically have growth and survival means. They, you know, if COVID's done nothing else for us uh, at the moment, it's it's amplified this need for us to be able to um, adapt and understand and respond. We everybody, the organizations that have been successful have been uh, the ones that are. You know, it's a Darwinian thing. It's not about whether people. Um, are able to survive um, as the uh, the fittest or the fastest or the strongest. It's um, the people who are able to adapt that are the ones that, uh, that that respond. And so, my interest has not been about um, so much. Or not talking today so much about why people need to embrace APIs to be successful, but what it is about the team behind them that is making uh, this success uh, come to life. So how, how am I defining an API team? Uh, it's actually anybody uh, whose primary role in an organization is somehow involved in the success of APIs for other, um, uh, other users, for um, other, other people um, that are either building, using, or marketing it. Um, it's a concentration of expertise and capability, but it can be federated and uh, uh, exist in multiple places around an organization. So it's not uh, a functional alignment uh, per se. It's, uh, it can include the people who are um, representing pro API as products externally uh, and who are um, helping and thinking about how customers and developers and users of those are going to promote them. Um, it can also be the people that are enabling or supporting that. Our observation is that API, API maturity tends to be uh, not really that linear. It tends to go through cycles of growth. Um, uh, API, a typical operating model um, 
itself goes through some change. It can start out uh, as being perhaps a little bit ad hoc. Uh, one team um, or a few teams, a few seeds kind of blossom with some expertise and early exploration. Then over time, uh, that becomes needs uh, has a need to be more organized, more centralized. Sometimes one of those teams steps up to be um, the lead. Um, and uh, uh, the um, uh, and then over time it becomes more federated. Um, this is quite typical in terms of an enablement. So for um, change to stick, uh, what organizations um, that we have spoken to that have um, found success is they basically said that if you innovate through continuous experimentation, um, that will be more effective in the long term to make change than having staged incremental improvement. So leaders uh, would put more than half of their effort into making an API maturity that is, um, uh, is going to be more um, stepped over time. An intentional API team uh, is has a very different type of approach in terms of how it makes a difference for um, uh, within an organisation. Uh, an API team that is intentional has uh, uh, is looking at um, APIs as a long term uh, product based piece. It's anchored in, in product thinking and it's highly disciplined in how it works. So it understands deeply the engineering capabilities, the um, scalability for APIs um, within its DNA, and it understands that its operating model will adapt over time. Uh, it uh, is inherently adaptable in its practices, in its cultures, in its behaviours, um, and um, uh, and what we've um, found is that uh, um, re that this is reinforced by organisations uh, that um, need to strike a balance between um, what they would uh, choose to invest in in terms of things like platforms. So we sometimes call this the kind of build it before build it and they will come strategy versus following investments against specific business priorities. So. We were asking people about um, whether they would uh, choose to put all of their money, their money just towards things that are high priorities for customers and businesses at that point in time, or whether they would build that uh, capability over time. And what they were saying, so a platform-based investment, which is actually putting uh, um, uh, the infrastructure, the technology, the, the, the engineering, the DevOps, et cetera, ahead of specific project requirements um, creates uh, a platform that will then allow the organization to change for future things. Um, we did notice that in lower complexity organizations um, that they would need to be able to focus more on shorter term business requirements um, and uh, uh, that created a different impetus. So I just want to kaleidoscope out a bit and uh, ask the question for how, how do organizations set up an intentional API team? And it really depends on the context and strategy for APIs in those organizations in the first place. So there's three different models that um, we see to describe how people approach APIs. The first model I call the same business new horizons model. So this is um, very typical for many organizations that are going through transformation at the moment. They intend to stay with the same customers, offer the same products, the same, uh, uh, um, uh, the same uh, distribution methods but they are looking to expand how they do it into different, different arenas. And I think Maria's example at Amadeus was uh, a, good, um, uh, a good example. Um, a couple of other businesses in the financial services sector, BBVA um, uh, in banking, Yula Armez in uh, ins insurance, 
uh, credit insurance in particular, they are um, examples of businesses who have uh, driven a lot of speed, simplification, uh, ease of customer experience, and underpinned it with uh, a strong API strategy. Organizations that are in this case that are looking to uh, adopt these models are, re are currently in a process of, of restart. They're, they're, they're booting up, they're, um, uh, they're looking to accelerate, make change. Effectively, everybody's investment plans are under scrutiny. Uh, everyone's being asked to think differently and uh, um, focus in. And so this uh, this pace, and, and there have been several examples already in the conference of people that have turned out things in days that would have taken months, but because they had the platform uh, uh, thinking in their in their headspace, they'd been thinking about long-termism, they were able to get going um, very fast. Uh, for, for API teams on the ground, the amount of pressure that they're under the, today can make day-to-day -day work feel almost like it's a um, it, it's a competition for resources that uh, uh, getting attention, time, access. And this is really challenging even for a, uh, an intentional API team, let alone a, a group uh, working in a more accidental way, because trying to get time in people's diaries, uh, finding uh, time and access to the right people um, in order to be able, means that they're uh, feeling like, it's you know it's a it's it's a it's a tug of war when perhaps it's time to be a bit more meerkat. Uh, the expectations on API teams is that they're out there connecting with communities very broadly, that they are um, scanning and uh, uh, looking out and keeping um, abreast and aware of what else is going on, who's um, involved in supporting, in uh, um, who's who's making a difference in the community. Uh, all of these are the modes of working that uh, an API team needs to be in, and yet everybody's operating in a world and you know of, uh, of remote Zoom and uh, Teams and everything else. Uh, this environment, which means the ad hoc interactions that can make the transformational change, uh, pick up weak signals. Um, is uh, uh, and um, amplify communities is becoming a challenge for people. The second model for organizations is those that have chosen to use APIs uh, as, as a way of launching a fundamentally different business. Um, Lemonade, if you uh, uh, haven't seen their, their, their business, is a really interesting one to follow. In the um, uh, insurance business, they've created a completely different customer proposition. Um, Capital One, very widely uh, cited as, as having launched as a effectively and presenting itself as a technology company. Um, these types of organizations have very broad API team roles. Uh, they could be loosely grouped into people um, with API capabilities that are business facing, uh, API capabilities that are technology facing or that are more uh, around enabling. Um, but there are many different ways in which people can choose to organize. A couple of roles to, to call out which are particularly mature in certain markets and, or, uh, and countries uh, and perhaps um, certainly seen less so in, in Australia. Um, developer relations is, a, is an enormous industry now or kind of capability, if you like, in the, at the moment. Um, continuously looking at uh, um, understanding deeply what the customer and developer experience is for, well, for the developer experience, for the, the new customers of the exploring customers in order to be able to attract people onto your uh, portal to distribute your products um, over other people's. And this, um, uh, this is also key uh, for the types of roles in this third model for where APIs are actually the business. Uh, um, Solaris Bank, uh, so another couple of financial services industry examples, the Solaris Bank, Germany, uh, La Parisienne Assurance uh, is an insurance organization in France. It's an older company that has completely relaunched itself as uh, um, marketing APIs as its core business in order to effectively white label its products. So 
the emphasis for these uh, um, uh, organizations is to be ensuring and working really hard on their having uh, access externally. And that becomes a key role for their API team. All three models involve what I call inside out thinking. Uh, it's like um, uh, they are choosing to colonize uh, countries in a different way uh, than they have done in the past. So uh, if they used to think about um, uh, going in and, and uh, exploring new territories with the biggest army and the, the most advanced weaponry, uh, it's now much more about um, working on trade agreements, perhaps ripping up the old, but working out the ways in which um, countries perhaps that they wouldn't have even thought of, um, uh, of going to, um, being invited in uh, to trade with them and APIs as, as part of that currency with the API team uh, key to keeping that communication going. Um, uh, and Maria brought this to life you know, really strongly about the importance of everyone needing to understand uh, um, what this inside out thinking actually means for them because it has an impact on sales teams, it has an impact on uh, customer relations, existing business processes, existing um, uh, 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 strategies, investment profiles. And um, uh, uh, we've um, heard from many organizations that on their early start in their API journey, if you like, that they very much thought of it just as an integration piece. So it's all about um, uh, ensuring that that communication is felt and understood because the impact is so great. Um, so where are the um, places that API teams should be focusing on? In our research, IT and business leaders said they would put two thirds of their effort towards communication that will resonate with customers and employees. So that is amplifying the stories that are successful and making a difference on the ground because those will speak for themselves over time. Um, and so an API team that is having to spend um, uh, all of its time in, in managing and, and upwards, inwards to stakeholders, investors, uh, needs to be rethinking about how to um, support that more broadly. Um, there's always a question about how to resource an API team. For change to be sticky, uh, the um, recommendation from uh, for things that will make uh, transformation stick is to, um, almost regardless of size of industry, is to focus about half the resources um, and effort on, um, half the effort and investment on supporting people who are already in the organization and or who will be brought into the organization. So this is about empowering embedding capability that will live for the long term. Um, uh, however, there is also a, a value in getting fast start from and outside thinking from experts from externals. And uh, but what was interesting in the research was that there is a, a group of senior IT oriented change leaders who would um, go for a slightly higher balance of externals. And um, I view that this is because there's an expectation on them that their, 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 their role is to be able to get change happening more quickly and faster through an organization. What are some of the things right now that are, that are actually a, an opportunity? What's a, um, uh, certainly true is that this is a, it's a global world and COVID, um, obviously we're in a global situation that is, this, that is, each of it's playing out for us individually and collectively in very many different ways. It, there's a really, there's an interesting question and the jury is out about whether um, generalists, people who are able to um, apply uh, thinking experiences and logic from multiple different forums, um, and and uh, and backgrounds and content and connect dots are the people that are going to be in need uh, to su to support what perhaps in recent years has been more of a focus on specialists. Um, uh, the other thing, of course, that is now open to people and must be particularly relevant in Australia, is that the markets for API 
expertise and um, uh, and input can, is, is really the whole world. So um, where uh, the geography um, and the uh, expense and effort of getting people to either come into and join teams and work in Australia and or uh, provide opportunities for Australians to uh, to go overseas, this, this is now able to be done from the home. Um, so uh, uh, re really key. However, as uh, one shouldn't forget, um, uh, and this was very much borne out by uh, what people have told us, API, successful API capability still requires on really deep understanding of the uh, existing processes and customer and data uh, um, to support them. So uh, it, one, one can't offer and be able to fulfill uh, complex customer needs without really understanding a lot of, uh, uh, call it legacy, but it's, it's process um, and, and data that will be able to last for the long term. So it's all about hybrid. Um, a key, uh, key theme for right now is to be thinking about how to balance the urgency that uh, um, API teams and organizations are under with uh, uh, effectively an, an, an empathy that understands the humanity of, of everybody involved. So API team members um, themselves are role models and have to be role models for the types of uh, ways of working, cultures that organizations are supporting and underpinning and expecting to achieve to, to complement their transformation. Uh, because they span um, so many different, they require so many different departments and teams, so many different uh, uh, stakeholders to be able to um, navigate and communicate. They've got to be able to do this um, in a respectful way. They need to have uh, specialists from whether it's you know security, DevOps, engineering, uh, development, all working cohesively together. And in order to do that, They've got to be able to um, influence, collaborate. So really role model all of those soft skills that are so uh, key to um, enabling change more broadly. So the um, so I'd be saying that so, so what I was saying for, uh, for for where people are right now is that the um, uh, uh, the opportunity to think about where we are at this point in time is we don't have an API team that, uh, like, the, like the Breakfast Club Misfits, becomes something that is temporary and disappears at the end of a project um, or at the end of a program, leaving behind something that needs to be continually supported. But we're really intentional about thinking about who we want, what their role is, um, and how they can uh, influence and um, uh, showcase broader change for the organization. Um, so in summary, um, organizations need people to be intentional about their API teams, leaders expect it, and uh, the API team members themselves deserve it. So thank you for that. I'm just going to stop my presentation. And Teji is just back. Oh. Thanks, Claire. That was lovely. So I was thinking that you mentioned about um, three different models. I was thinking, which one is your favorite model? Like the model which you would probably use most of the times, say in the normal times, not in the COVID times. And um, why would you use that model? Uh, there's there's no one um, one better than another. It's more yeah. about I think to me where the heritage is. So um, if you are launching, you're a, you're a fintech, uh, insure tech, reg tech, uh, then yeah. really you're at a launch. You're the second second model. Um, okay. If you are uh, um, undergoing wide scale organisational transformation, and you have uh, the time, the energy, the investment and support behind you, then uh, you'll look more like that first model. 
Um, yeah, I, I would call it, which is the um, uh, yeah same same business. The third yep. one is the I call it the burn the boats um, equivalent, okay. because if you go all in and decide that your business is APIs, clearly your business is not what it was before. If if that's the change that you choose to do, and you know there are many organisations that are launching uh, APIs as their business. The interesting challenge now is how many of them there are around. So how do you make your API uh, experience um, discoverable and easier for the external world? So um, oh, wow. I think it would be really interesting to see who, um, you know, which organizations choose choose what. Um, but, it, but it is yeah. a pandemic. The other thing I should add is it hugely depends on the, um, uh, the, the strategy of the organization, the thinking and the mindset and the experience of the leadership. Uh, because they've obviously got to have, get things in a very different way, uh, depending on which of those they go for. Sure. Yeah, that's insightful again. Thanks, Claire.